Hey guys, welcome back for another video from Allie's Vintage Camera Alley, and today I'm going to talk about these point and shoot compact cameras. It's always good to have a compact camera that you can bring with you to events or to parties just so that you can have film and don't have to think about aperture and and uh, all that. Close to you with my sure shot zoom. It's fun to do. get your shot with a sure shot zoom. A lot of these cameras, people wonder why did they bother to even make them? Because they don't seem to do anything special. For the time when they were made in the 90s, everything was being developed for convenience. And that's what these compact automatic cameras were really for. I just wanted to shoot with a couple of them and see the difference in the lenses and the difference in the quality. So this Canon SureShot BF belonged to my Uncle Dallas who passed away a couple months ago and I actually found it with some film. I got it developed and the film actually had pictures of the last time I visited him. So that was pretty nice. Now the SureShot BF, the BF stands for Big Finder because the viewfinder is nice and big and bright. This camera just does your usual automatic focus, automatic winding, automatic film advancing. You could do self-timer. It's got the flash and uh, automatic eye, red eye reduction. Then you got the Nikon Fun Touch 5, which is from 1997, I think. And this one, basically the same thing. It does the flash. You could turn the flash on or off. Uh, it's got autofocus. Uh, it's got a 29 millimeter lens, um, but it also has the auto rewind and auto film advance. Nikon uh, Nice Touch 3. So you got the Nice Touch and the Fun Touch. This one is a 31 millimeter lens. You know, it's kind of cheaply made, maybe a step up from a disposable camera, maybe. We'll give it a try, see what the quality is. And then finally, there's the Fujifilm Big Viewfinder Auto 10, which is probably comparable to the Canon BF. This one has a 29mm lens um, and also has all those same features as the others, except I don't see a button to turn the flash on and off, so I think it just has automatic flash where it senses when you need the flash. So first I'm going to try the Nikon Nice Touch 3. It's from 1995 and I'm going to load it with some Kodak Gold 200. I got this on clearance, this film, for $1.98 at Walgreens. So it looks clean inside. I guess first I should put some batteries in it, that would be good. This takes two AA batteries. So to load film into this, put it in here, lay it across, close it, let's turn it on. It says you repeatedly press it until you see the number one. So it's advanced to number one, and I'm going to go shoot some pictures with it. Okay guys, so I finished that roll of 24, and it automatically will stop taking pictures once you get to the end of the roll of the film. So now on the bottom here, in order to rewind the roll, you press this switch. Very loud, as these tend to be. So rewound the film, open the back, look it even left a little bit. So these pictures actually came out pretty nice. I actually like these the most out of all the pictures from the cameras. Um, the only issue I had, like in this picture with the lizard, is that if I was too close to the subject, um, the subject was out of focus, and I kept forgetting that part. And the same in this picture here. I was too close and the flash went off. The pictures obviously aren't great, but I didn't edit them for the purpose of this video, so it's just raw and what they, what the camera actually took. See here that the flash worked really well indoors with my animals. And you can see Jasmine back there ready to kill Frankie. But um, some of the shots really nice. I really love the outdoor shots. The colors came out pretty good, and 
they came in pretty good focus. Like look at the textures on this banana plant and the colors on the leaves. I really like that and the shadows it picked up on. Sometimes these cameras come take very dull pictures so I really liked um, the colors and everything. So next I want to try out the Nikon Fun Touch 5. Now this camera is from 1997 um, and it has a 29 millimeter lens and unlike the Nice Touch 3 this one does have uh, flash control on it at least, whereas the other one was all automatic. It had no controls at all, um, no manual controls at all. Um, but this one has autofocus, so I'm going to take some pictures with it and see how it compares. So first I'm going to load it with some batteries. This one also takes two double A's like the other one. So I guess in order to not use the flash you hold this button down and the flash won't go off. So that's a nice feature because on the other one I was putting my finger over this to not use the flash. And then in order, if you want to make sure the flash is used, you hold your this button down and it uses the flash. So now I'm going to load it. Kodak Gold 200. See how this one compares to the Nikon Nice Touch 3. This is the Nikon Fun Touch 5. To change things up, I gave the camera to uh, Kelsey. Say hi, Kelsey. To switch things up a little bit, she shot half the roll just to get somebody else's perspective. So I'm going to rewind the film. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> Ooh. I hope that roll even went through correctly. Is that going to explode? <laughs> I can't get it to stop! Well, that sucks. Ay 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 ay. Well, that ended up being a disaster. I had to go in the closet and try to get the film out and pull it out myself. I had to take the batteries out in order to do it. So the film is probably exposed. I don't know if it'll even develop, so we'll see. Hopefully that's not a waste. So I'm surprised the pictures actually did develop. The whole roll wasn't ruined, but you can see that there's light leaks from it being exposed to the film. Um, these are the pictures that Kelsey took, and some of them did come out really nice, and it was nice to see someone else's point of view um, and see someone else's eye, especially Kelsey. She doesn't really, she's not really into photography, so it was fun to take her out and see what she would do with a with a point and shoot. And some of the pictures um, were okay. Um, the color wise and focusing wise not really anything great that I would really like to point out the shadows came out okay in this picture and I took this picture from the doctor's office through the window just to get creative but really nothing really great so this camera I wouldn't recommend too much I'm gonna try the Fujifilm Big Viewfinder Auto 10 hopefully this one doesn't eat my film Maybe it doesn't like me using Kodak in the Fuji. I don't know. Alright, so that one's ready to go. Hopefully I have better luck with this one. So I finished this roll, but it didn't advance to the 24. So I don't know if this if this camera's gonna eat my film too. Film advance is going backwards, so that's a good sign. But it sounds like it's rewinding. I hope it is. The counter moved all the way back to start, so that's good. Please don't have ruined another roll. Okay, yeah, there we go. Hopefully it came out with some good pictures. I actually really enjoyed this one because I really liked the viewfinder. So we'll see how the pictures came out and see if it's worth using.
Okay, so finally, now I'm going to try the Canon Sure Shot BF, which was my Uncle Dallas's camera. So this one looks like it's going to be similar to the one I just used, the big viewfinder made by Fujifilm. But this one has an LCD screen, um, which shows you your flash and your counter and all that. So this one's probably newer. This one I think was made in the year 2000, so it's newer than the others that I tried. So we'll see what kind of shots this one gives. So I guess you just lay it across and the camera does the rest. There it goes. Ready to try it out. Apparently the roll is finished. I'm not sure how I feel about that noise. That's the loudest one yet. <laughs> okay, so finished with the roll of Kodak Gold 200 in the SureShot BF. Yes. Okay. So we'll see how that roll comes out. So these pictures, they didn't come out great, but um, some of them are nice. Some of the shots are nice. I like the, the trees. I like this one of the tall tree that came out pretty nice, the wide angle. The flash went off here and exposed the detail in the tree bark and all that, but it's not great. I like this one of the trees lined up, again with the wide angle. And some of them are nice, the colors and everything, and the shadows came out. I like that. It's, they're not dull. And uh, this one of the pineapple came nice and sharp, which is nice. Um, and I like the vine. But really nothing great. I think it's not my favorite. Nice detail, but kind of dull, like the colors here are not that great. And that's about it. My final thoughts for the Nikon Night's Touch 3 were the colors, the detail, but I have to remember to stand at least three feet away. I think it was my favorite. The Nikon Fun Touch 5 had good flash control, which is good for street photography. It had a nice wide lens, but it did eat my film. The Fujifilm Big Viewfinder Auto 10 really didn't have much, just some nice colors. And the Canon SureShot BF had a nice big viewfinder and a nice wide lens, and some of the pictures were sharp, but nothing more than that, really. I'll probably be giving away some of these cameras in the future, so be sure to hit the subscribe button below and please share with your friends. And as always, stay motivated and keep shooting.